this lesson we will talk about numbers. Like I said before, there are two data types to represent numbers, float and integer. There aren't many differences between them besides the first having decimals. The operations we can perform on them are the same, and as we will see, Python converts integer to floats automatically when an operation results in a number with decimals. So let's create two variables, one called num1. Let's assign an integer, so 5, and another num2 with another integer. If we get the type of those variables, let's try with num1. As we can see, it's an integer. Now I'm going to create a new variable, and I'm going to divide num1 by num2. And now the result has decimals, and if we get the type of the variable, it's a float. So as you see, those types can work together. So most of the times, you don't have to worry whether your variable is an integer or a float number. Python will take care of it. Some programming languages don't even make that distinction, like JavaScript, where there is only one data type called number. Now something important that I want to say is that for those of you who speak languages that use comma to separate decimals, be careful, we must only use dot. Okay, so let's change the value of num1. Be careful not to do this, okay? Always use dots. And we should never use thousand separators. So if you have a big number like this, be careful not to use thousand separators because, because this might have unexpected results. So don't use thousand separators and always use dot to separate decimals. So what operations can we do with numbers? We already know the basic operations. Let me just change the value of num1 to 5 again. Now we know that we can use the plus sign to sum those numbers. We can use the dash to make a subtraction, forward slash for division, and the asterisk for multiplication. There is also an interesting operator, which is the modulus operator, represented by the percent sign. So if I do this, so 5 modulus 3, so what it does is that it divides 5 by 3, so the result is 1, and instead of continuing the division, it stops there and returns the remainder, which is 2. This can be useful in some situations, like figuring out if a number is odd or even. So if we get any even number and make modulus 2, it's always going to return 0, because there will be no remainder in the division. But if we get any odd number and do the same, the result is always going to be 1. Another operator is the double asterisk, which makes a power operation. So we can do like 5 to the power of 4. We also talked about using parentheses to define the hierarchy of our operations. So we could do something like 2 plus 2. So it's going to make the sum first. We can use as many parentheses as we want, so it's going to solve 2 plus 2, and then it's going to divide by 3, and only then it's going to divide by 4. So those are the basic math operations we can do with numbers. There are also some built-in functions that can be applied to numbers, like the round function we used in our kilometer to miles converter. So we can use the round function to round any number with decimals. And if we pass only one argument, that is the number we want to round and nothing more, it's going to return an integer. But as we saw, we can also pass a second argument, which is the number of decimal places we want. So let's try it with two decimal places. 
Like I said, be careful not to confuse this with thousand separators. So sometimes I like putting some spaces like this. So now I know that this is a number with decimals and this is the second argument, which is the number of decimal places I want. Okay, now what if I want to do more complex operations with numbers, like logarithmic or trigonometric functions? One of the best things about Python is that we can import modules and extend our possibilities. And because of that, I would say that there is nothing we can't do with Python. So if we want to use the functions I just mentioned, there is a module called math that comes with the Python installation. We can call it by writing import math. Now inside this module, there are hundreds of math functions we can use, like for example, the factorial function. So we could do like math dot factorial. And then we can just choose a number, for example, five. And what it did is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, which is 120. We also have more options to round numbers. I can round up or down a number by using the seal and floor functions. So if I use the seal, it's always going to round. I forgot the math, so math.seal. And no matter what number I pass here, it's always going to round up. And I could do the opposite using the floor function, which is always going to round down the number. We can also do math.log20. This gives us the natural logarithm of 20 to the base e. We can also get the pi value by typing math.pi. These are just some examples. If you want to know more about the math module, just go to Google and type Python math module. This is for Python 3.7.1. So let's, let's go to the documentation. And here you can explore all the functions you have available through the math module. We will talk a lot more about modules later in the course. Python has many built-in modules, which are the ones we can call by using import directly, like we just did with math. There are also thousands of external modules made by other people, which we need to install first, and then we can also import them. I will also teach you how can you build your own modules. Well, this was all I wanted to talk about numbers for the moment. We still have some more data types to learn. I'll see you in the next video.